Y'all got to remind me about that, okay? All right, so now I'll share and go back. All right, so like I said, I drew a parabola over here, but it's not symmetric to the y-axis when it's shifted over like this. But notice, I started out with this lowest point being what I call the vertex. And like I said, it's the minimum or maximum point on the parabola. It always comes in the form of an X and a Y. So when you talk about the vertex, it's an ordered pair, okay? Now, notice if I drew an imaginary dotted line, cutting my parabola in half, this imaginary line is what I would call the axis of symmetry. Because it's now symmetric to that line I drew. If I fold my graph over this line, it lands right on itself, okay? So the axis of symmetry, that comes in equation form. And it's in the form of x equals whatever that number is, okay? Remember, that's why we had y'all drawing those vertical lines on that test one, so that y'all would knew that uh, vertical lines are x equals some number, okay? When you had y equals a number, that made it horizontal. All right, so we can make what we call a line of, that's called the axis of symmetry, and it always equals the x coordinate of the vertex. That's gonna be the x value where that graph is cut in half, okay? Now, the y value of the vertex, so the y value of the vertex gives the minimum or maximum value. So on the vertex, X gives me the line of symmetry or the axis of symmetry. The Y gives me that minimum or maximum value, okay? Alrighty, so I'm gonna try to type a message real quick. Uh, someone that's having issues hearing me, maybe they can log out and log back in. Uh, All righty. Now, I got a formula to find in all these values, the vertex. Once I got the vertex, I can find my line of symmetry and my min or max value. So the vertex formula. Now here's another question for y'all. How will I know if I got a minimum or maximum value? Because there's one thing I can do is look at that equation. Okay, now, when we look at the equation, we're going to look at the x squared term. If you look at the x squared term and it's positive, then you have a minimum. If that x squared term is negative, because remember, when I make my function negative, that flips it over the x-axis. So if I flip over a parabola, it's going to give me a maximum value, okay? So valleys give you mins. Peaks will give you a max. All right, so y'all, here's the vertex formula. To find that x value, we use negative b over 2a. Now, if y'all remember, we've seen that negative B over 2A because that was sort of like the first part of the quadratic formula, okay? Now, to find the Y values, you plug negative B over 2A back into whatever function you have. So, you find the X value, plug it into the function, and get the Y value. Sort of like when you use graphing. 
So let me show y'all some examples on this and then I'll sort of go toward the end. Then we'll find vertex, increase and decrease and then all that. So this function is going to be f of x equals x squared minus 12x plus 27. So that's my function. So check this out. The x squared term is positive because it's got a positive one in the front. So since it's positive, I know I'm going to end up getting a minimum eventually on this graph or this equation, okay? So first of all, on this problem, I'm going to find the vertex. The uh, axis of symmetry. Determine if it's a minimum max. So determine if min or max and that value and then they want us to graph it so i'll tell you how i would do this if i was to graph this on MATLAB. okay all righty so let me pull this down so we're going to start finding the vertex here so first of all i know that a equals one b equals a negative 12 C equals 27. So I'm going to find my X coordinate first. And to find the X coordinate, I'm going to do negative B divided by two times A. So y'all, my first step, I'm going to put parentheses for those variables, keep everything else the same. So B, we said was negative 12. So that's going to give me a negative times negative 12. And on bottom, A was 1, so I'm going to put my 1 in there. So on top, I get a positive 12 divided by 2. So that gives me an X value of 6. So when I get my ordered pair, I know for sure that my X value is 6. So now I got to get my Y coordinate. My Y coordinate equals F of whatever that negative b over 2a is. Well, when I found negative b over 2a, it was 6. So that means I need to find f of 6 to get my y value. All right, so that means take our function they gave us and put a 6 in for those two x's. So I'm going to have 6 squared minus 12 times 6 plus 27. So you get 36 minus 12 times 6 is 72 plus 27. So y'all adding that together, 36 minus 72 would be a negative 36. Negative 36 plus 27 would be a negative 9. So I know the y value is now negative 9. So that would be the first part of this. Find the vertex. And y'all, there's my vertex. So everything else is going to come from them points. My line of symmetry. So line of symmetry. Now Math Lab might say axis of symmetry, but it's the same thing. Remember, that always comes in the form of x equals the number. So it's going to be x equals my x value, which was 6. Okay, so now you got to figure out, is it a min or max value? So we said earlier that any time that this x squared term right here is positive, that meant we had a minimum, so we have a minimum 
or max value, and that value is the negative nine. That means that your range on this problem would have to start at negative nine and it would go upward towards infinity on those Y values, okay? If that was a max, then it would start at negative infinity and head to that number. So you just gotta look and see which one you got, okay? And I think later they will ask about range, so I'll get to do some of that with you. Now, if I was going to graph this, let's see. So let's see, we're doing what, 7.5? So let me go to my actual math lab and pull that up for you. So I'm going to stop this share. Now my question might be different in the math lab, I'm not sure. If it is, I'll try to get my values real quick for us. All right, so seven, five. Now, once I get on the homework, it'll probably make me reshare it so y'all can actually see the problem. And we'll do the same thing we just did, but with this new problem, if it's different than what I got wrote down, okay? All right, math lab, load up. This will be number two. Oh, hang on. I got the wrong homework. Ugh. I got support instead of your, uh, all right. So let me go to college jobs for seven, five right here. So is this actually showing you on my homework page or do I need to reshare? Reshare. All right, so that's what I got going on. So let's see. So now y'all should be seeing my homework page. So we're gonna redo this problem with this and so you can see me graph it and everything. So let me write this down. F of X equals X squared minus 18x plus 77. So we'll go work this out and then we'll come back and put our answers in and uh, graph this one, okay? All right, so y'all should now be seeing what I'm writing, right? Yes. So let's find A, B, and C. So A is one, B is a negative 18, and C would be 77. All right, so we're gonna find our vertex. So the X coordinate member, to get that X coordinate, I'm gonna do negative B over two times A. So that'll be negative. I'm gonna replace my variables with parentheses real quick. B for us was what, negative 18? And A is still one. 
All right, so two negatives make that a positive 18 on top over a positive two on the bottom. So dividing that 18 over two, I get a nine. Which means we know the X coordinate on my point is gonna be nine. So let's see, someone's asking is the test open to take now? I'll probably open it tonight. Um, not sure, but I'll, I'll open it up tonight. So let me write that real quick, I guess. Some of them couldn't hear me. It'll open tonight, but it won't be due till Sunday. All right, so now we want that Y coordinate. To get the y coordinate, we find f of what we just get for that x, nine. So f of nine, replacing these two x's with a nine, gives me nine squared minus 18 times nine plus 77. All right, so let's see, nine times nine is 81 minus 18 times nine is 162. And then at the end is a plus 77. All right, so I might use the calculator on this. So let's see, 81 minus 162 plus 77, I'm getting a negative four. All right, so my y value is negative four. And y'all, I pretty much got everything I need to finish this problem. So let's go back to the math lab and remember that point, nine, negative four. All right, let me share my homework. All right, so y'all should be seeing my homework page now. So the vertex occurs at and this says type of ordered pair, which we got to. So I'm going to click this ordered pair down here. I'm going to put in my X value, which was nine. And then I'm going to tab over, put in my Y value, which was negative four. All right, so I got nine, negative four. So you got to check these as you go through this problem. Find an equation for the axis of symmetry. So an equation has got to have an equals. So remember, we said that this was x equals, and it's going to be equal to whatever the x value was we just got on that vertex, which was 9. So you put your x equals 9 in there, and it's going to make you go to the next part of the question, which will be about that minimum or maximum. So the x squared term is positive, which means this looks like a parabola that looks like a u. So it's got a minimum. So you come to a. Now, if you had a maximum, you would click b. So it wants to know the value of the minimum. Well, that was the y value, which was a negative 4. So like I said, once you get the point, you got everything you need for the other two questions, okay? So now it wants me to click and enlarge my graph. All right, so we know this is a parabola, which is gonna look like a U. And it also says vertical parabola tool on it. <clears throat> so I'm gonna plot my vertex first, which was nine, negative four. So I'm going to come over here and find 9 on the x's. So go over to 9 and then down 4. So that looks like neg uh, 9, negative 4, and it shows me that point up in the right corner of my box. So I'm going to click that. And uh, I can't tell, but it looks like there's two points on that. So... Several ways you can get another point. You can go plot this in your calculator. So I would go to y equals and punch in my x squared minus 
18x plus 77. And I'm gonna just go to my table to find me some more values, okay? So let's see, I'm gonna do, when I go to my table, I get six, five is one of them. So here's six, one, two, three, four, six, five. Notice, when you put a second point, no matter what that second point is, it's drawing your whole parabola for you on this one, okay? Now, you could have did the uh, quadratic formula to that and just punched it on your calculator using your quadratic formula program and that would have gave you where it's crossing this x-axis at. So it almost looks like it's crossing right there at that seven. So doing your quad, you might've got seven is one of your solutions. So you could have used that as your second point. So you're gonna plot the vertex first, no matter what, and then any other method you can come up with a second point, save that, and then you would check your answer. All right, so I'm going to warp and I'm going to go to So y'all knowing what I just told you, let me go back to my tablet. Knowing what I just told you, see if this is true or false. The function f of x equals negative 9x squared plus 9x minus 7 has a maximum value. Yes. And that was true or false, and I done heard someone say. True. It's true. Definitely, because remember, we said if that first term was negative, it flipped that parabola over. And when it flips that parabola over, you definitely have a max. All right, so good job on that. All righty, so one more true or false, and then I'm going to get into one of these bigger problems we got. So the graph of h of x equals x plus 4 squared can be obtained by translating h of x equals x squared right for units. So this would almost go back to the 7.2 when you were moving your graphs left to right. And when your X's are inside parentheses with your numbers, that plus four is gonna move me left or right. So if you remember, when it's inside the parentheses and that's positive, so you're adding to the X inside the parentheses, actually moves me left. So this one would be false. For that to move right four units, that would have to be X minus four, okay? All right, so Richard, let me show you what we got coming on. Um, I think this is the area where you were talking about. This problem I'm given f of x equals x squared plus 10x plus 24. All right, I'm gonna find the vertex. Uh, min or max and value.
the range. Oh, remember, range is just the y values. Intervals of increasing and decreasing. So every parabola is going to have one side going up and one side going down, but we got to find the intervals. Now, when we talk about the intervals where it's increasing and decreasing, on those, we're talking about the domain values. And when we're talking about the range, you're looking at your Y values, which are your range, okay? And your domain values are your X's. And then let's see, intervals of increasing and decreasing. And I actually didn't even have to graph these. I just got to answer all these questions on this. So the most important thing is figuring out A, B, and C. So A is one, B is 10, and my C is 24. All right, so we'll find the X coordinate by doing negative B over two A. So that's the formula of the day, right? So let's see, we put in a B, which is 10. So that's gonna keep that negative. And then A was one. So I got negative 10 over two, which will give me a negative five. So I now know my X coordinate is negative five. So we're gonna go get our Y coordinate. That'll be F of negative five, because that's what my negative B over two A gave me. So let's put a negative five in for these X's. Now, whether you're doing this by hand or calculator, when you got a negative X, put it in parentheses. Because a lot of y'all get lazy and you'll punch negative five squared in the calculator, you just miss this whole question, okay? Because negative five squared is not a negative 25. Negative five squared is a positive 25. So I get 25 minus five times 10 is 50 plus 24. And if you always notice on this problem, the first and second numbers are always opposite signs and they're usually double each other. So if this is 25, that's usually 50. If this was four, that would be eight. One would be positive, one would be negative, okay? All right, so let's see what we get. 25 minus 50 is a negative 25. Negative 25 plus 24 gives us a negative one. So our vertex is negative five, negative one. So my next question is, do I have a minimum or maximum value? Minimum. And that's true because that was positive, right? So my parabola is going to look like this. And we know this little vertex was negative five, negative one. So we got our minimum and the value of. So what is the minimum value? Negative one. Negative one. Now see, they threw you a curveball because usually the second part they're asking for the axis of symmetry and you're used to playing with that X value. But guess what? They don't even ask for the axis of symmetry on this question, okay? So they just try to throw a little curveball, change these questions up a little on you. All right, so we got our vertex, min or max value, the range. The range is, since this is a minimum, I gotta go from this minimum Y value and it goes upwards forever. Now, it includes this Y value. So since it includes that Y value, you got to use a bracket. And y'all, think about this. On the domain, we always go left to right. On the range, we always go from the bottom up. Okay? Now, here's my question. It's going from negative one. That's my minimum Y value here. Well, where are they heading towards? 
Infinity. Oh, what did you just say? Infinity. Infinity. So you go to infinity, infinity always has a curve parenthesis, okay? So then here's the new part. And this would be how you would really do the stuff in 6.8. When you're looking at the intervals of increasing and decreasing, you're only worried about the X values where that happens. So I'm gonna start with my increasing first, right, it's interval. And then we'll write the interval for the decreasing. So let me pull that down. Looks like this a little bit there. Now you read graphs left to right. So from the left to right, this first part of my parabola is going downhill. So this one's decreasing. This right side is going uphill. So this one is increasing. So we started with increasing. So what we got to look at is at what X value does my graph start increasing? Well, we got the vertex right here, right? And we know what that X value is at that vertex. So that vertex, the X value is going to be the transition from one to the other. So at this X value of negative five, now in intervals, when you're doing increasing and decreasing, that point can't be increasing with a bracket and it can't be decreasing with a bracket. So we always use curve parentheses at this X value because y'all, it can't be both. Okay. So this is starts increasing at negative five. As you head out these X values, you're headed towards what? Infinity. Infinity. So from negative five to infinity, this graph will always be going uphill. So the left side is decreasing. But y'all, I can see where it ends, but where does it start it's decreasing from on these X's? Because no matter where I head out here, left to right, that graph is going to go downhill. So we say this one starts at negative infinity. As I come in from negative infinity, this graph is going downhill until I hit that X value of negative five. Negative five. All together, your graph will go from negative infinity to infinity when it's a parabola like that, okay? You just gotta figure out what's the X value where that's switching over. The range, like we said, only concerned about the Y values. It wanted to know the minimum to the maximum, okay? So Richard, hopefully that sort of fixed you up on those because um, those, those. Yeah, those were sort of long and uh, I'm actually going to do this last, very last problem for you about the toy rocket. And this just giving you, this toy rocket example just shows you like an application you can use the min and max stuff on. So I'm going to read most of this, but I'll write the equation they're giving me. So a rocket shot vertically into the air from a launching pad six feet above the ground. So I'm six feet above the ground with my launching pad. It has an initial velocity of 112 feet per second. So 112 feet per second. So they tell me the height of this rocket in feet. So H of T. T is the variable here because we're talking about time. A lot of real world problems, time will be your variable. So they just call it H of T. H stands for the height. So this is a formula that can find the height of my rocket at any time T. 
So the formula is negative 16 T squared plus 112 T plus six. Now, you don't have to know these formulas. They're gonna give you the formula. I just sort of wrote this stuff down so you can see why they got my formula from. So that six feet above ground, that's what that plus six is. Because if these T's were zero, so you hadn't shot your rocket off yet, those would zero out and your height would be six feet, okay? Right here, you can tell they use that for that 112 T, right? It's going 112 feet per second. I just got to figure out how long my time was to see how long it was traveling at that speed. So here's an interesting question. What do you think that negative 16 T squared comes from in this formula? Gravity. Gravity, negative, you got gravity right there. So gravity is pulling down at negative 16 for every second squared, okay? All righty, so I just wanted to show y'all how they got the formulas. You don't have to know nothing about that. They're gonna give this to you. But here's the question. They wanna know, um, the rocket reaches maximum height at blank seconds after launch and then the maximum height is blank. So remember, since they're talking about a value on the maximum height, that's going to be whatever you get for your Y value. Since time is my variable, basically, then the X value will give me my time, okay? So y'all, what do we want to do? We want to figure out A, B, and C so we can use our vertex formula. So A is the negative 16 for me. B was 112. C was six. So let me get my X value by doing negative B over 2A. Y'all notice the only thing about the real world problems, they got big numbers. So let's see, B was 112 and A was a negative 16. Now notice, all these negatives are gonna make this positive because time has to come out as a positive number, okay? So whatever you get for that X value, gotta be positive. So I get a negative 112 divided by negative 32. So y'all, let me see what that's gonna give me. And I get 3.5, which is 3.5 seconds. So come up here and we know that part's gonna be 3.5. Now, let me see, this will say, uh, simplify your answer. So I'll just use decimals on it and it's good to go. So to find that maximum height, we gotta find F of 3.5. So we're going to put a 3.5 in for our T's. So you got negative 16 times 3.5 squared plus 112 times 3.5 plus 6. So if I square 3.5, 3.5 squared gives me 12.25. So this is negative 16 times 12.25 plus 112 times 3.5 plus six. So although y'all hate decimals, some of these problems when you deal with the real world are gonna make you use them, okay? All right, so that 12.25 times that negative 16 will give me a negative 196 
Now remember, one of these is going to be double the other. So 112 times 3.5 gives me 392. So if you double 196, you'll get 392. And then at the end is a plus 6. All right, so let me start adding these together. My negative 196 and 392. Gives me a positive 196 plus my 6. So I added them together. So let's see, 196 and 6 was what? 202. That means my rocket had a maximum height of 202 feet. So that's almost 20 stories, I would guess, on that. So y'all, that's what you're going to see in 7.5. You're going to find the vertex a few times. In the first few, you deal with just finding that vertex. Uh, then toward the end, like I said, it's going to uh, throw in a little bit of that increasing and decreasing. So, if you want, there is one tricky one that had a fraction in it that I can sort of work out and show you how I would do. And this is y'all's number three on your uh, homework. So on number three, mine gave me f of x equals 2x squared plus 14x plus 27. So let's see, A is 2, B is 14, C is 27. So this one just wanted me to find the vertex, axis of symmetry, and then determine if it had a maximum or minimum. So we got to get that X coordinate and that Y coordinate. So my X is always negative B over 2A. So what was my B? 14. And then my A was 2. So I'm sort of scared because I'm getting a negative 14 over 4, which is not going to divide out very nicely. Now, on this, I'm going to keep it as a fraction form. Um, let's see. Uh, and I think they only want fractions on this, so no decimals in the math lab. So you can't divide that, but you can reduce that by dividing both of them by two. So you get a negative seven halves. So my X coordinate is going to be negative seven halves. So now I got to find that Y value. So that's going to be F of a negative seven halves. So I got two times negative seven halves squared plus 14 times negative seven halves plus 27. So the first thing you got to do is the exponent. No multiplying whatsoever until we do that exponent. So this two comes down. When you got a fraction raised to an exponent, you raise the top and then you raise the bottom and square them both. So negative 7 on top times negative 7 is a positive 49. 2 times 2 on the bottom is a 4. Everything else I'm just going to bring down for the second. And you'll notice adding and subtracting and all that fun stuff with fractions is probably worse than uh, any other numbers. Now notice, I just put a 1 under the 2 and a 1 under the 14. Because now I'm going to multiply. When you multiply the fraction, top times top, bottom times bottom. 2 times 49 is 98 over 4. This is a positive times negative. It's going to stay negative. 14 times 7 is 98 over 1 times 2 is 2. And then here I get plus 27. So since I'm about to add and subtract, I'm going to put a 1 under my 27. 
Alrighty, so I'm going to find a common denominator so that I can add these fractions together. So the common denominator between a four, a two, and a one, the smallest number all three of those will go into is a four. Right, four goes into four once, two goes into four two times, one goes into four four times. Now, the first one already has a four on the bottom, so I don't have to change that. The second fraction, in order for the bottom to turn into a four, I multiply by two, which means I gotta multiply the top times two. So let's see, 98 times two should give me 196 over four. Now, to turn the last one into a four on the bottom, I gotta multiply one times four, so I need to do 27 times four. So let's see, 27 times four, gave me 108. So that's gonna be a 108 over four. So remember, they got a common denominator. When you add them together or subtract them, there's gonna be a four on the bottom. All right, y'all, here we go. And notice these numbers are still twice as big in opposite in signs. And if you notice, usually the first one's always positive. The second one's usually twice as big and negative. So 98 minus 196 on top is a negative 98. Negative 98 plus a 108 would give me a positive 10. So y'all, the last step, reduce that 10 over four into a fraction. Now on your calculator, you just punch in 10 divided by four. It's gonna give you a decimal. Turn the decimal back into a fraction, it'll give you a reduced answer. But on this one, since both of these are divisible by two, I wanna divide both of them by two and get a five over two as my final answer. So five has becomes my Y value. So there's our vertex. So fractions, if you're doing them by hand, are a little tedious. Toward a calculator, you could have punched in this equation right here. Two times negative seven halves squared plus 14 times negative seven halves plus 27. Calculator would have gave you a decimal, and then you could have turned it into a fraction and got five halves. All right, so the power of the calculator. So here's my next question. Axis of symmetry. And remember, yeah, that axis of symmetry has to be a, an equation. So what do you got? X equals negative 7. Um, Perfect. Min or max? This is a minimum. Minimum, because I got a positive x squared. Minimum value is? Five halves. And then it would have you graph that. So the graph would be split into halves for this one, okay? So let me show you. I'll go, I hope this, let me go to my math lab. I doubt that number three is the same, so we might have to play with it again. So let me see. And every time I switch these, uh, so 2, 14, always just off by that 127. So say we work this. So I'm just going to act like we work this so I can get the actual numbers real quick and show y'all how to put these in. So that's what a 2, 14, 24. So let me see. So this one still has a negative seven halves from a y value, and it has a negative one half for the y value. So say we played with that and that's the numbers we got, because we don't want to do this long problem all over. So watch this. You come in here, you're going to do the vertex. We said that looked like an ordered pair. So y'all are seeing my homework page, right? Yeah. All right, so shift. Uh, 
So I said that was what, negative seven halves. So negative seven divided by two, arrow over, do my comma. And then my other one was a negative one half. So negative one divided by two, arrow over, put my other parentheses and enter. So we put our, and then you told me this would be uh, x equals probably negative seven halves. So that gives me what, x equals negative seven halves because you gave me the x value while ago. You told me this was a minimum, so you gotta click on minimum here and check it, then it'll ask me for that value. And we said that was what the y value, which while ago we said was negative, this one will be negative one half. Then you'll check that. So I wanted y'all to see this one being graphed. So click on the image. Pick your parabola tool. Now I got to do the vertex first. So notice this is split into halves. I don't understand. Say again. We were at we were at a five two five over two from ten over four, and now we're at a one half. Yeah. So here's the thing. When I was graphing this on MathLab, it didn't give me the same exact problem that I did on the paper. Oh, okay. So I'm just showing you how you would graph it if you did have the uh, negative seven halves and five halves. Okay, I still graph it the same way, but I didn't want to do the whole problem all over again because infractions are sort of long. So I'm actually graphing a different problem than we did on paper. Okay. 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 Now notice the graph for any of them are going to be split into halves. So a negative seven halves. You would just go left seven times because there's a half, two halves, negative three halves, negative four halves, negative five halves, negative six halves, negative seven. So that's negative seven halves is basically negative 3.5. And then it goes down negative one half on this one. So I would just go down one and click it. Now y'all had negative five halves while go. You'd have to go down one, two, three, five times, so you'd be at about a negative two and a half on that one I did, okay? All right, so we need another point. So you can throw this into the quad program real quick and do it that way, because remember, the quad tells me where it crosses this x-axis right here. So if I go to my quad, program quad, A was two, B was 14, C was 24. I get negative three and negative four. So that's the two points that's crossing this X axis. So you can either come over here to negative four and put a point, or you can go to negative three and put a point. Now, another way to get that point, you could have graphed this on your calculator and then went to second table and found you two, another point that way, okay? But the main thing I want y'all to see is that you gotta plot that vertex point you found as your first point on these, okay? All right, so you save those, check them, and then you move on. So let me go back to written. So that's basically the stuff you're gonna do in the seven five, okay? You plot that vertex. Six eight has the increase and decrease in. But remember, on those, you're just looking at X values and you're going left to right. So those will be pretty much like that second one we worked out, I think. All righty, so any questions on any other homework up to now? Now, I want y'all to notice another thing. Check your emails, because I sent out a bonus this morning for test two, and it's only two questions. Um, and it'll still be worth half a letter grade, five points on that test, okay? Are we gonna be going over the review again tomorrow like we did last week? Mm-hmm. You know, actually, okay. uh, 
if y'all got questions on doing this stuff I sent today for uh, six, eight, and five, four, I think it is. If we got questions on those, we'll knock them out and then we'll start our review. So y'all's y'all's actual lab is almost like it's a day behind your actual lectures. Um, but if any of y'all are ready, I will open. I'll open up test one. I mean test two tonight, and then it. But it's not due till Sunday night, like the last one. Okay. All right. So I'm not seeing nothing on the chat. So tomorrow's a good day to be here when we review, because I'll go over the 20 questions that match those 20 questions on your test, okay? And I'll tell y'all what, pretty decent on that test, especially when y'all got them uh, review scores up. And then the bonus helped out a lot of people on that test, okay? So, y'all, I'm not seeing any questions. Um, so what we'll do, we'll we'll stop this record and I guess I'll see y'all tomorrow, twelve o'clock. <laughs>